This year has been packed with some pretty fun vehicles and I've been so fortunate to get in some of the rarest production cars offered today. But this AMG is by far one of the most unique experiences I've ever had. And I don't necessarily mean that as a good thing. Let me explain. This AMG GTR is not just an amped up version of the base AMG GT. Oh no, that's, that's just child's play for the team at Alfalterback. Take for example the front fenders. These giant bulging fenders that extend way out. Well, this entire piece is carbon fiber. Now, I know many of you may be watching this on your phone, a computer, and you may not be able to see as clearly, but I have been examining this very closely and I didn't notice any discoloration or color shift when going from a carbon fiber part to a metal painted part. That is seriously impressive. And even more impressive is this easily missed piece underneath. You push and hold a button on the inside and this extends downward. It extends as much as 1.6 inches to create an insane amount of downforce to keep you sucked onto the road. Or come to the back and look at this insane exhaust system. Unlike the normal GT, this is a titanium exhaust system and by utilizing this system, it saved 13 pounds of weight. And you see the gap right here? That's not some sort of odd design choice. That opening is a channel to let hot air escape and prevent heat soak in the rear. Even this trunk, just like the Nismo GTR that I reviewed like a month and a half ago, which by the way, the link is down below, it utilizes a sort of carbon fiber polymer to save even more weight. And you might ask what all this reinforced rigidity and weight savings does. Well, you get to add the extra weight for a folding mechanism in a convertible. Yep, that's right fam, this is the super ultra rare limited to just 750 units in the entire global market AMG GTR Roadster. mechanism adds weight to the vehicle, the reinforcement that they did to the car still allows it to hit near identical 0 to 60 times as the coupe version at 3.5 seconds and the final top speed is 1 mile per hour slower at 196 instead of 197. And seriously, can we just go back to this beautiful matte paint, brilliant blue Magno? It doesn't just sound like a delicious dessert, but it's also a $3,950 paint option, and this isn't even the most expensive one. My buddy George, AKA Motorman TV, he had a GTR Roadster in that $9,900 paint option, the solar beam yellow metallic paint. In my opinion though, I really like this matte. Additionally, on this model, the one that I have, it's equipped with the AMG Exterior Carbon Fiber Package 1, which includes front splitter, rear diffuser, fins in the fender air outlets, and side sill inserts to all be in carbon fiber. Overall, the exterior absolutely beautiful and bonkers at the same time. But let's talk about this interior which is just as sophisticated on the inside as it is on the out. Saddle brown is a beautiful color and all of the interior carbon fiber is matte, which I love way more than shiny black or even shiny carbon. Along with the matte carbon fiber, there is still a ton of safety tech. This particular model has active distance assist and Distronic Smart Cruise Control for 2,250 US dollars. But I honestly never used it because this GTR Roadster is just way too much fun not to be in control of the wheel at all times. 
This one's also equipped with an $875 option that includes lane keep assist, tracking, and it also includes blind spot indicators. The cherry on top in here would be the $4,500 Burmeister 3D sound system, which seriously, look at the speaker grill. It looks like fine art, but for this amount of coin, you get an 11 speaker, 1000 watt system that honestly is really good considering this is a soft top convertible. And to wrap this package up with a neat little bow, this AMG GTR Roadster is equipped with the familiar 4.0 liter V8 bi-turbo. You've seen me review this in the GLC 63, the Vantage, yet in here it produces 577 horsepower, 516 pound-feet of torque, and it's mated to a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission. And what's even more amazing is that this includes rear-wheel steering. And with a wider overall track and wider tires, this GTR Roadster is absolutely planted to the asphalt. I have to give the engineers a lot of credit. The steering wheel feel in here is laser locked on and this car handles phenomenally. So if all of this sounds so amazing, then what part of this isn't good? Well, for starters, I was not gifted with tall German jeans, and apparently Mercedes wants to remind me of my vertical limitations, as I have zero seating position that makes sense. You see where I'm sitting? This is where I'd like to be in relation to the pedal and the steering wheel, but now I can barely see out my right side mirror, unless I lean back and move over. So thank God for the blind spot monitoring system. It's been very helpful, especially when it starts to rain like this. Oh, and on top of that, I don't have any rear visibility either because my line of sight gets cut off by Plexi. So my only option is to drive forward and fast. And while driving this is amazing, there better not be any other cars if you're going around twisty turns and bends. Because even at the highest seat setting, I still feel really low and I can't even see over the side edges of this GTR Roadster. So thank God for Lane Keep Assist Tech and that there are sensors all around this car with front and rear cameras. And to further add salt to the wound of my vertical limitations, let's talk about these beautiful LCD display screens right here in the center. When I position my seat where I need to sit to drive, I can barely even see the screens, especially on this side. And I can't even enjoy this succulent embossed AMG logo because my elbow was about four inches too far forward. It's about the same if I was leaning back and turning around to look at someone in the second row of the car. And don't even get me started. This GTR Roadster retails for $210,000 290 US dollars. It suffice to say that the majority of ownership is a specific age range, unless you're Shmi, of course. Hey Shmi. Hey puppy. <laughs> but you know that frustrating feeling you get when you buy, let's say, a Bose full theater system and it doesn't quite pair 100% and you're left with using four remotes. You got your Bose remote, the Apple TV, the TV remote, the cable remote, and you're juggling back and forth. Well, that's kind of what it feels like in terms of car settings in here. You got redundancy of buttons because you can press buttons over here, but then you can also do the same stuff here and there. And then you got display screens changing here and there. It could be extremely confusing for someone and it's not necessary because the steering wheel honestly is designed perfect. It's so easy, so smooth. You don't even need all this redundancy and buttons especially someone like me who can barely even see it. And if that wasn't complicated enough, this doesn't even have the updated MBUX. It's like the first generation, so I can't even talk to it like I did in the A220. But speaking of tech, at least there's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto in here. But CarPlay utilizes the full screen and Android Auto, well, it's cropped. But at least it technically supports both. Wow, that rain is really coming down. Shh, it's like ASMR. Now listen to the raindrops as they hit the soft Sorry again to you Windows OS phone users, not gonna work. You lucked out, just like my height. 
But I do have to say real quick, the ease of these climate buttons here and the vents are superb. Now, while I may sound a little irate about the redundancy and just an overall lack of a fluid user experience in here, I do have to give Mercedes credit when it comes to this driver's display. The setup is not new, it's pre-MBUX. The three different modes are great, although I found Super Sport to be the best looking. The capacitive squares on the wheel, nothing new for Mercedes, and was actually very easy to manipulate. But in all seriousness, if my main complaint is mostly the redundancy of the buttons and functions, then you know this vehicle is something very special. Yes, do I wish that the seat controls were like other Mercedes on the door? That would have been amazing. And yes, don't be fooled by the pretty saddleback leather. These seats are not made for comfort. Oh no, they are full on race seats. In fact, there are holes for you to add harness points. This AMG GTR Roadster is like a wolf in sheep's clothing. And even then, it is scantily clad clothing. There's no mistaking this for any of the softer S or C variants in the GT lineup. But what's absolutely bonkers is that Mercedes obviously already did this in the coupe form, which totally makes sense. But this, oh man, this is like a middle finger, a giant one going up to Turbo S Cabriolet owners. Now Porsche, they haven't let me get into anything in their 911 range, so I really can't comment on how a new gen turbo feels, but this GTR Roadster is exactly how it feels to drive, just plain naughty. So this is where someone like me would talk about if this is worth buying. But quite frankly, if you could afford this, you've already made your decision. In fact, this entire episode really isn't a review for discerning buyers. This is a reminder that Mercedes isn't just focused on churning out vehicles and making sure they maintain their number one seat in global luxury sales. This episode is to remind viewers that there is a not so little factory tucked away in a quaint German town that produces Frankenstein works of art for the Silver Star. Now, if only they could make me some leg extensions.